It's Monday. Can you imagine what the apostles must have been feeling? The day before, they'd, they'd come into town with Jesus riding, as Jesus is riding on the colt, the foal of a donkey. And the people are crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The people are, are welcoming Jesus and they've got, there's this sense of excitement and electricity in the town. This time, Jesus wakes them up. By now, they know that the longer this goes on, the more times they go back into Jerusalem, the more dangerous it's going to be. He wakes them up and he tells them he's ready to go back into the city. So leave Bethany again. Having been staying with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in their home, they make the journey back into the city. And on the way, Jesus sees a fig tree that looks like It should be in full blossom and bearing fruit. He arrives to the tree and he says, he realizes there's there's no fruit. And so he curses the fig tree. And scholars debate whether that's an indictment of just the religious leaders or if it's an indictment of the entire nation of Israel. For they had missed the fact that their heart was not involved in their worship. And on their way back, they go on. Curse of the fig tree occurs. They enter into the town and Jesus goes into the temple. And Jerusalem is a buzz. Everyone is moving everywhere. This is the high and holy day of the year for them. Passover is coming. In just a few days, those, the, the great sacrifices will be made and, and people are coming and offering things from time to time already in the temple and they're getting ready and the money changers are setting up and people are selling their goods. There was nothing wrong with selling. The problem is that they were making that the point of worship. See, people had had substituted the form of worship for the intent and the heart of worship. Jesus goes into the temple. And this is recorded for us in all three synoptic gospels, in Matthew 21 and Mark chapter 11 and Luke chapter 19. And we're told that as he comes in, he cleanses the temple. He clears the temple of all the the money changers and the merchants there. He flips over their tables and people are scattering. You've probably been there. When some great commotion happens and in the immediate aftermath is silence. Maybe even emptiness. For a few moments, people are trying to figure out what's going on. You see, Monday is all about authority. It's the authority of Jesus put on display in the fig tree and with the fig tree and then also in the temple. After he clears out the money changers and merchants, the lame and the blind come to him. He heals them. He begins to teach. And that night, he does, he's ready to, to go back. And so he goes back to Bethany for rest. Because tomorrow, tomorrow he's going to to engage in some of the greatest teaching that we've ever known. Some teaching that today still informs us of of who we are, God's great plan of salvation for us. Tomorrow, he's going to come back, teaching in the temple and teaching the people. And in the meantime, the religious leaders of the day recognize if they don't do something soon, they're going to lose their power and their control. They begin to organize. They begin plot against the king of kings 